We finally back to dinosaurs. Can't help it, guys. I've got to get out of my system somehow. And now that my History of Earth series is finished, I can be a little bit more free with what kind of videos I upload. So let's take a look at one of the mega theropods that makes it onto everyone's list of the biggest terrestrial predators to ever live, the Carcharodontosaurus. Carcharodontosaurus is actually quite an old genus with regards to the science of paleontology, having been described back in 1924 when teeth were found embedded within the walls of Fogorans or underground aqueducts for water transportation in the African county of Algeria. The rock used for this was Cretaceous in age, taken from the continental intercalar formation. Initially, these were described as a new species of Megalosaurus, with the species part of the binomial name being Saharicus. But that didn't really mean much since Megalosaurus had become a wastebucket taxon at this point, having things assigned to it when paleontologists didn't know where else to put it. Now this was the first description of material, but the initial discovery of something much more conclusive was found 10 years earlier by Richard Markgraf, who found a partial skull, teeth, vertebra, a partial pelvis, and various leg bones in the Baharia formation in Egypt. Unfortunately, due to political tension between the British-owned Egypt and Germany, these findings were not transported back to Munich for a whole decade, and then it was nearly another decade before the famous Ernst Stromer had a look at the material. Stromer agreed with the initial diagnostic of the characteristics of the teeth, so elected to keep the species name, but looking at the rest of the skeleton, this was no Megalosaurus. He saw the serrations on the teeth specifically and noticed how similar they were to those of a great white shark, so he thought that the shark toothed lizard had a good ring to it, electing to call this dinosaur Carcharodontosaurus saharicus, meaning shark toothed lizard. So this shark toothed lizard was found to be a member of the Allosauroids and became the namesake for the family the Carcharodontosaurids, with other members including Concavenator, Meraxes, Tyranotitan, and the famous Gigantosaurus. As a member of this group, it was relatively typical, looking extraordinarily similar to Gigantosaurus in terms of its skeleton at a glance. This was a robust theropod with relatively small but powerful forelimbs complete with three claws. Heading up to the head, we see that Carcharodontosaurus had a large but slender skull, being lighter than those of Tyrannosaurids. Similar to Gigantosaurus was also a bumped surface along the nasal ridge that lightly had a keratin sheath along it, creating some form of crest. Now if we look at the animal's namesake, the teeth, they were surprisingly thin. Theropod teeth in general were thin and blade-like with serrations running along the edge, with T-Rex being the only real outlier for this. But Carcharodontosaurus's teeth were especially exaggerated in this regard. These things were not robust for a theropod of this size, and were simply meant to slice flesh only and keep away from bone. And then we get the overall size of this theropod. Carcharodontosaurus reached sizes of around 12 to 12.5 meters, or 39 to 41 feet long, and just over 6 tons. Meaning this guy made the top list of the biggest terrestrial predators in Earth's history, all of which are theropod dinosaurs. Thought to have only been beaten by Gigantosaurus, T Rex, and possibly Spinosaurus, depending on who can agree on its weight. The Spinosaurus is actually relevant to this guy, as you might have guessed with the thumbnail, but firstly, let's take a more general look into what kind of life this theropod was living. A Carcharodontosaurus has actually been found in a few formations, all of which show similar conditions from around 110 to 95 million years ago. The most famous of these though is the Baharia Formation, which I did talk about in my Spinosaurus video here, but don't worry, I'll explain it again. I got you. Now this formation is famous for its high amount of fossil content, and it's thought that this is thanks to this coastal area's constantly fluctuating sea levels, endangering the lives of many organisms here before burying them pretty quickly in sediment. Various river systems weaved through this area leading out to sea with it being prone to the odd monsoon, but generally being stable in terms of seasonality, staying generally hot and humid year-round. There were plenty of repairing forests, along with mangrove swamps in the brackish waters as you headed more to sea. A good analogue that has been pointed to for this region is various Caribbean or Southeast Asian ecosystems. Occupying this region alongside Carcharodontosaurus were various mollusks and crustaceans, as well as a diverse number of cartilaginous and bony fish. Aquatic reptiles included some small sea turtles, plesiosaurs that ventured into the river systems along with various crocodilians. 
Baharia even has the earliest known sea snake. When we get more firmly onto land, we see the Baharia was quite special. It was, of course, dominated by archosaurs, mainly dinosaurs. But the carnivore to herbivore ratio leans a surprising amount to the predator side. The only large herbivorous dinosaurs known from here are sauropods, such as Egyptosaurus and Paralotitan. Theropods, on the other hand, include indeterminate abelosaurids and dromaeosaurs, as well as Bahariosaurus, Elaphrosaurus, and, of course, Spinosaurus. Which brings us to the inevitable question that everyone loves to ask, what did this thing fight? Well, I don't get the obsession with pitting dinosaurs against each other and don't know why we can't just appreciate them as animals. But my half of views with zero dignity left, so let's get into it. Well, it doesn't really look like much would have tried messing with Carcharodontosaurus, with many nicknaming it the African T-Rex. I, I, I have so many issues with that. So it's not likely that a fully grown adult had much to worry about. The only animal that could match its size was the famous Spinosaurus, but it's not just a question of size and teeth. Spinosaurus was a dinosaur that, despite its length, was a lot more lanky, being built for a semi-aquatic lifestyle and long spear-like jaws built for catching fish. It's meant that Carcharodontosaurus had a pretty good edge on land, likely being stronger and more mobile. This doesn't mean that Spinosaurus was completely defenseless though. You still wouldn't want to be caught between those jaws, and the claws of Spinosaurus were bigger with quite a bit more reach than Carcharodontosaurus. But before anyone thinks that this would be a pointless debate because they likely kept out of each other's way, occupying different niches, we actually have found Spinosaurus remains with bite marks on the sail that match the teeth of Carcharodontosaurus, as well as bite marks and embedded teeth in the vertebra of Carcharodontosaurus that belong to a Spinosaurus. So the two most definitely took bites out of each other, but as to whether this was fighting or scavenging, it's unclear. In short, my money's on Carcharodontosaurus, but I don't think it would be even close to an easy fight. Who knows, maybe even with Carcharodontosaurus succumbing to wounds later down the line. But as ever, I want to hear what you guys think of this death battle. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys next time.